Hey Bernie, Tim Hendren, your mayor here. Just going to give you a quick update from our city council meeting last night, as well as a quick COVID-19 update. Uh, we didn't have a whole lot of uh, business activity in our meeting last night, but we did introduce our new city manager, uh, Ben Thatcher. So expected it, but it's the hospitality has been outstanding. So. If for some strange reason you haven't heard that we had a new city manager, uh, you could watch a repeat of last night's video and see him introduce himself. You also saw last week, um, over the weekend, there was a quick video introducing Ben Thatcher to the community. Um, I'm excited that he's here and I think that we're going to do some great things in Bernie with our new city manager. We actually had a quick discussion about our uh, the pending retirement of Chief Doug Meckel, our uh, fire chief. He's been our fire chief for the last 16 years and his retirement date's coming up here in the next few days. And we wish him well as he goes into retirement. Uh, obviously that's going to bring about some change in the, in the fire department, which our uh, new city manager Ben Thatcher is working through. And uh, I'm sure we'll have some new announcements about what's going on there soon. Uh, let's talk about COVID-19 and we'll do a quick update real quick. If you've uh, been watching the numbers, I mean, I know some of you are, uh, there was a big change last week. You, you may have seen last week I gave you an update and we had actually reported by DSHS uh, reporting standards that we had zero active cases actually for several days. Uh, but on Friday that all changed and all of a sudden it looked like there was a big jump in COVID-19 cases. But what actually happened on Friday is DSHS changed their reporting guidelines. They had admitted that they've fallen behind in reporting on uh, test cases and going through their investigative process to make sure cases aren't showing false negatives. Um, and so what they decided to do last Friday is instead of trying to tell us just the active numbers, um, they said, we're just going to lump everything together. If we're going through investigations, if we have a high likelihood of uh, suspicion that it is a positive case without going through additional verification steps, we're just going to add all these numbers together. So as of last night, uh, if you looked at the DSHS numbers, it would show that we have 10 active cases. And I, I put that in quotes. It would say we have 10 active cases in Kendall County. But we have five that are undergoing investigation by the DSHS staff. There are two that they're listing as probable but unsure, which leaves three uh, that are actually known to be active. And that's the change since last week. So five under investigation, two probable, and three that were known active. So if you compare today's numbers with just a week ago, it would, you would just, just see that we have three active cases as of today. So I don't want to overreact to these numbers. I want to make sure that we all understand what's behind these numbers. We talk about these when we meet with our, uh, our regular morning uh, conference calls with Judge Lux, myself, and Mayor Manitas from Fair Oaks, as well as an entire support team. And we talk about what these numbers mean. Um, we have seen this big spike happen in San Antonio. You've seen these big spikes happen in other large cities. And, but we haven't seen that big spike happen in Kendall County. And frankly, I believe that's because uh, most of us are doing the right things. We are following the basic CDC guidelines, right? Which is wash your hands when you're touching things that aren't yours. Wear a mask when you can't guarantee social distancing, but really just try to manage to a social distancing of stay six feet away from others if you don't know them, if you don't live with them. It's really not that complicated. And, you know, I have to ask myself, these numbers, they move by one or two. Um, some people might believe they know better than DSHS, but I have to go with one set of reporting guidelines, and I'm going to go with the state is telling us. And if that number changes by one or two or three or four, frankly, it's not going to change my personal behaviors. I'm going to continue protecting myself and protecting others, and I would encourage you all to do the same. I don't go into large venues. I don't go where there's going to be a bunch of people that I don't know. I personally just continue to isolate myself right now, and, and that's fine. Yeah, I go to a restaurant occasionally. I feel comfortable doing that, and I said this last time. If you don't feel comfortable going to restaurants, don't go. But when you do go out, I would just encourage you, if you're going to be around people you don't know in social settings, uh, if you're going to be around there for a while, wear a mask and encourage others to wear a mask. I thought I would share with you, I have three examples of first-hand experiences now, and a couple of these are very close to home. All these examples I'm about to share with you are people I personally know. I have one person that recently uh, became infected with COVID-19 because they went to Las Vegas a week ago. They went to a highly crowded area and they probably didn't follow guidelines. They probably did what people do in Vegas, which I know that usually stays in Vegas, but she brought it back to San Antonio. 
I have another uh, group of friends that went down to the coast recently on where they went fishing at, at Port Aransas. And they did all the things that people do at the beaches. And sadly, uh, almost all of them infected each other over the course of that weekend. Again, they're going in large groups with people they don't live with, and they're not following the, the basic guidelines from CDC. And then I have another friend of mine who they're just doing their, uh, their weekend thing with their kids and doing organized sports. But they believe because they're outside, even though they're hanging around each other, they believe that just because they're outside, they're protected. And candidly, if you're around somebody who's infected, even if you're outside, if you're close to them for a long period of time, the CDC guidelines say if you're around them 10 to 15 minutes, high probability that infection is going to incur. Um, you know, I don't have children. I don't go to those kinds of events. But I would just encourage all of you, you know, really be thoughtful about where you're going to spend your time. Um, and if you're going to be in large groups, you make that choice. And I think you need to make the choice to protect yourself and protect others. Again, I carry my mask with me everywhere I go. And I put it on when I believe I'm going to uh, be around others that I don't live with, that I'm not, gonna, that I'm not frequently around. I do. But I generally just try to avoid all that, and I would encourage you to do the same thing. You've seen the governor make a lot of those comments recently. Uh, the spikes in San Antonio, the spikes in, in Houston, the spikes in Dallas, um, those, are, those are unfortunate. Um, we don't have a huge spike in Kendall County, but if we do see that, based on all the testing we've been doing recently, we had a lot of tests last Friday at the walk-up clinic. Uh, there's another test going on this Friday. It's scheduled go get yourself tested. We've had hundreds and hundreds of tests being done in the last couple of weeks. If we start to see uh, a big increase in infection rate or any of the other trends that we look at on our COVID response team, um, we'll, we'll be ready to make any kind of uh, steps that we think are appropriate to protect our community's health, to protect our community's well-being. So for now, I wanted you to understand what's going on in the numbers and as they're reported by DSHS, Department of State Health Services, what we look at as your elected officials here in this local community. And when we talk with our, our medical advisory board and get their opinions on this, we're, we're taking in all this data and we're gonna do what's right for our community. My, my last word to you all is be safe. Wear a mask when you're going in public and you're around people you don't live with. Wash your hands frequently if you're touching things you don't own. Um, and really just keep that social distancing thing really, really in front of you. Tell people to just kind of, let's just stay away from each other for a little while. Again, this is the coexistence strategy that we have to have for a while as we're living with COVID-19. That's all for now. We'll bring you an update as soon as we have more information. Thanks, Bernie.